you haven't watched the video on the ESP settings do that not right now of course but soon um, because ESP settings are kind of personal preference to a large degree I like a stronger um, dampening effect but I also don't want it to kick in until I'm more on target so there's less interference with my flying but then the video that I linked where Avenger 1 talks about it he likes it to kick in more gradually and start to pull his aim earlier when he's on target. So the first section on your ESP settings, um, and can somebody pull those up? I don't have the stream open. If we can just look at ESP settings now so everybody has a visual. Yeah, I got mine open. Oh, he's got Okay, cool. So if you can take a look at Johnny's screen and let me open up mine so I'm using the right terminology. Um, the first one is the enhanced stick precision zone in degrees. So this is how close your aim will be or the nose of your ship will be to your target before it kicks in. I have mine at 15 instead of the 20 because I want to be a little bit more on target than not. And I'm probably going to take that down to probably uh, like 10 because it's still kicking in a little bit early for my preference. Um, and then right under that, we have the enhanced stick precision dampening curve. This is how strong the dampening effect is going to be for your inputs. So anything that's pulling you off target will be less effective. It basically just kind of cuts your engine power if you want to think of it that way. Um, any movement that is on pip won't be dampened. So it, it feels to the flyer kind of like a magnetic effect towards the target. Um, play with this often until you find something that feels good with you and then never change it. A lot of the the skill aspect to Star Citizen, I mean, all of the skill aspect to Star Citizen is the personal, actual player skill. There's no leveling. There's nothing that you can do that makes your character better. It's all you. And you will be good however you practice, right? So find stuff that makes sense to you. Like pe some people think that the roll on my right stick twist is insane. But yes. it works, right? But it works for me. <laughs> And it just feels natural to me. So it's what I practice with, and whatever you practice with is what you're going to get good at. So play with it, the uh, stick precision, the ESP settings often um, to find something that feels good to you, and then then go with it. There are, while we're looking at this screen, um, I'm going to take over Johnny for a second so I can share my screen. Because this is, this is true. There's a couple other things I was going to bring up here, like velocity indicator is another one that you should always have on, always on, never set yeah. fading. You want to see that, that that TVI. Yeah, we'll get into the TVI stuff. That's actually another good one that we'll probably jump into next is your interface and UI and what all this different shit actually means because it's super useful once you understand it. Uh, right. And you can see what he's talking about for settings here too. Mine's sixteen ten right now and one sixty. I'm probably going to tweak these down a little bit. I tend to start. Yeah high and do what I refer to as training wheel settings. Even when I first started using sticks, I I limited the throw on the curve initially, so the, the, the T1600. So I'd actually zoom in the curve quite a bit, so I couldn't even get the full throw. Even though I knew I would turn slower than people, it was just to get going with it. Now, I don't do that at all, right? I'm using Joystick Gremlin. I have very gentle curves now when it comes down to it. And I will go over Joystick Gremlin next and my curves in it, etc. We'll do that. After yeah, I, I have not messed with curves very much but what i wanted to call out here is right under the star map zoom speed we have this section of just toggles right we have flight g safe defaults on oh yeah make sure that this is off at all times never turn your g safe on you're gonna have to work on making your pilot not pass out because you can but with g safe on you are crippling your ship because you can't push it as far as you would be able to with with G safe off. Uh, additionally, flight 
space break, space break rather engages boost. You want to make sure that this is off as well. Um, having that on will burn through your boost way quicker than you will otherwise. Also, you should be using space break often, but we'll get to that um, beyond the setting stuff. Uh, boost is what wins you dogfights. It's not really shields so much. Shields are important. Don't fight when your shields are down. Um, your capacitor charging your guns is important, but boost will give you the better position. It makes your ship work at its best, and it will get you the win in fights. Yeah. BVP and Star Citizen in later tiers pass to the, the jousting phase. And once you have your speed control down, it's all about positioning. It's all about maneuvering, and boost is critical. There is no shame in pulling off of an engagement if you're out of boost because you are at a disadvantage boost is just as important a lot of people disregard it use it often use it wisely and make sure that you have some to get out of really bad situations um, um echo can i can i actually uh show um a demonstration of that i actually can pull it up that'd be really great quick. yeah, let me yeah sure i'll stop sharing my screen here because that that was all, right. all i really needed to show and also if you guys look at my screen right now um Hold on. This is my. Actually, I did my, my um, ES, ESP. It's at 13, is what I fly with. Um, <clears throat> all right. Let's see here. So, pull this up real quick for everybody. This is Echo and I's fight earlier when we were sparring. Um, I had a advantage, and I quickly lost it because of two things. One was I got excited because I was going to blow up Echo, and I forgot to roll. And then the other part was I didn't reset my engines. All right, let me find it real quick. This is another great thing to do for everyone who's new or intermediate and stuff is record your, your combat and go back and watch your tapes. It's an amazingly good teaching tool. And then also getting other people, Echo does a lot of this for people, is reviews their tapes for them and gives you feedback. Those guys, and you're fantastic. Okay. Yeah, if so you want. Here, here's, Sorry, Echo's, here's Echo and I's fight. And towards the end, you'll see I run out of boost, and I forget the roll because I got excited, and it resulted in him landing a size 5 cannon shot on me with no shields. Okay. Can everyone see it? Yeah, I can yeah. see it. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, I got it on the stream, too. This was a good fight, too. So the for people that don't fly with a scythe often, um, it has two size twos, I believe, uh, but it has two size five cannons. So it's a very strong hitting ship, and it's not nearly as maneuverable as the Talon is, but uh, you can't get in front of it. You'll have a bad time. So Ed is doing a really good job here using his boost to keep out of in front of me and keep me trying to turn into yaw. You'll see me try to roll to stay out of the yaw. Yaw is the weakest axis of your ship. If you can, always roll into and either down strafe or up strafe. If you can do up strafe, it's a stronger axis. Um, but if you can get your opponent to fight in yaw, you'll win. It's as simple as that. Yawing will not let them get on target and you'll be able to outstrafe them every time. Uh, I am trying to upstrafe here, but it's not really working because the Talon is so close. The closer you are in maneuverable ships, the better that your turn rate is. And the Talon has a much better turn rate than the Scythe does. So him staying close and making me constantly turn is exactly what he should be doing. There's a couple of times where I was getting excited and forgot the roll, and that caused a lot of DPS to drop. Also, um, something else about boost. If you can see on his screen there, he has just a little bit of the yellow boost versus the red. If your boost is in the red, you can't activate it. You can still use that if it burns all the way through. But if your boost is in the red, like I think it's 20% is when it hits red. You 25. can't use it. 25? You can't use it. You'll have this to get other back up to 26. This is where I should have put points when my shells were full. And I had a full weapons capacitor, I should have put points in the engines and let it recharge. Yeah, capacitor management is very important now. We'll talk about that later. Um, we're getting into 
a little bit more complicated stuff right now. We'll get back to settings in a minute, but it's a good um, illustration. See here, boost is entirely gone. So he lost a lot of the maneuverability advantage that he had before. And I think this is probably where I, yep. yeah. Yep. But yeah, that's, that's just solidifying what you were saying, Echo, on the whole speed and boost thing. Yeah, boost lets you win fights. But anyway, back to... Okay, back to can I, side. just one note if I can make it here? Yeah, absolutely. Because I don't, I, don't, I don't think you mentioned before, but it, boost is not afterburner. It's not a forward speed boost exclusively like it is in other games. This is something that applies right. to all of your thrusters in any direction. So you can use it for to power up your up strafe. You can use it to um, retro burn. It will you it will apply to any set of thrusters you're activating. Yes, good call out because yeah, it it does sound like it only makes you go faster straight. That is not the case. All your engines get pushed to the best that they can do. However, that is that you're maneuvering, you'll do it as quickly as your ship is possibly capable of. Does that ignore speed limiters? Uh, you can bind it to, but no, it will not, by default. So if you're going, if you have your speed limiter set at SCM, and for anybody that's unfamiliar, uh, on your HUD, on the left you have your velocity gauge, which tells you how fast you're going. The speed limiter is the box on there that you can move around. So uh, the green at... section... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, Sorry. I just wanted to interrupt. If you look at my stream right now, you'll see it, and you'll see that my box is solid. Eh. But when I click a button here, and I do have it set as a toggle, it goes to a broken line box, which tells you the speed limiter is now off. So I use a toggle right now to turn it on and off. So when I want to run away, I just toggle it off, and then I can boost as fast as I want. But that, yeah, it will. the limiter will stop your boost. Also, another bind while we're going over settings that you should make is you need a bind to turn your pip between lead and lag because they are good for different things. Lead pip has you target a place in space where your ship is computing the enemy will be. Uh, this is a little bit more subjective to pip wiggling and desync and whatnot. Um, lag pip is where your weapons will land for how you are flying. So if you prefer to have your view always on the enemy, or if you, for larger ships, if you want to target like the, um, there is a turret on the front of the Idris that is two size fives or something like that, you can use lag pip to put your pip over that and you will hit it and you can destroy that turret. So my rule of thumb is for things like um, gladiuses, I can use both. Anything smaller than a gladius, I only use lead. Uh, and then anything bigger, like an Avenger, not, not Avenger, I'm sorry, a Vanguard, or bigger, I use lag. So if you look at my screen right now, I have a toggle on the same actual trigger as my speed limiter, the other one. So right now I am on lag, and then I'll change it to lead. And you'll see that like it's pushing in front, right? I prefer lag now. I used to be lead only for a long time. The thing that converted me over to lag was actually gimbals. Auto gimbals on lag is really nice um, because you are actually aiming more with it. So it's not relying on the gimbal to track. Whereas on lead, it actually relies on the gimbal to track. Right? So you have to keep it in that circle there. And it's much easier for them to dodge. But if you go to this, I'm not using that circle anymore. I'm actually using the pip to aim on target. And I'm going to shoot you for a second. Thank you for demonstrating. Beautiful. Absolutely. And you see what I mean? Like for lag on gimbal, it's amazing. Lead on gimbal, he can dodge this way easier. See what I mean? But then when oh, I put dude, lag on him, just, oh, it's on the YouTube channel. Sorry, so you can recheck the bot too. That's also for the the reason why. So everyone can go back and rewatch the bot. They have uh, things more you want. Anyway, back to you, Echo. Lag and lead, having it on a toggle. I watched Echo's uh, tapes. This is where I learned it, and I, I emulated because of that, and I'm absolutely in love with it now. Yeah, it'll take you a little bit of time to get used to switching, um, but do it at your convenience. Do it with like Xenothreat stuff or ERTs. Just get used to switching through it, and you'll feel out uh, where the situations would require or be better for lead or leg, um, and then you'll be landing more shots, and your accuracy will improve because of it. Um, for other settings, I can't think of anything directly off the top of my head. Does anybody have... Look questions? ahead. Look ahead. Yes, turn it off. 
all of it? Well, there's sorry. Let me let me rephrase that. So there's look ahead. Look ahead is actually the one that uh, is induced by G force. So if if you don't have a Toby eye tracker, if you don't have head tracking things like that, this is a quote unquote simulation of it. But basically, as you're pulling G's in your ship, your character will look that way just slightly. You can increase or decrease the strength of it in the settings, and that's all of the look ahead ones. They also have it for turrets and all kinds of other things. Uh, I always get it confused and call it look ahead, but what I'm actually referring to, I believe, is is it target zoom? Is that what they call it? Target zoom, yeah. Auto yeah, zoom. Look ahead. So the Dark Law actually has a really good config for it where it is pretty damn decent if you tweak it correctly for uh, a substitute, yes. like a poor man substitute for a Toby. But yeah, you're looking for the zoom, the target zoom one. Yeah. Yep, that's... I just found it. So if you if you go a little ways down, it's actually about six or seven spots below the uh, lead lag uh, hit, but it'll say vehicles targeting enable auto zoom on locked target. This can get very, very annoying, and it also gives you tunnel vision. As you have something locked and you're engaging it, your character will zoom in on that target more and more to the point you can't see anything around you. Good point. There are tours. We do that. Yeah, 100%. So just turn it off. <laughs> I actually like it on right now because I'm an old man with bad eyes, and I need bifocal glasses. <laughs> That's <It sucks>. fine. <laughs> just recently, I, I found out I need bifocals. It does. Uh... I did remember one more thing. Um, for your field of view, it should be as high as you're comfortable with having it, so you can track better. This game really punishes not knowing where your enemy is. So anything that can give you a better uh, situational awareness of your fight, so you can see where they went, do it. Head tracking is great. I'm not telling you you have to have head tracking, but it helps significantly. Um, in the meantime, turn your FOV up so you don't have tunnel vision again. And FOV is under the graphics tab. Think of it as going into like a, a turn with the car. You break into the turn, you accelerate out of the turn. Um, be careful doing this. And I want to call this out real quick. Um, fighting a Star Citizen is very much a momentum game. So you have to be very careful about when you lose your momentum. So this is only when you need to turn on a target that's pretty much behind you. Uh, otherwise, you want to keep your momentum up. But we'll, we'll get into that later. If you don't have your capacitor management someplace where you can get to it quickly, do that. You will constantly be switching through engine or power to engines, power to weapons, power to shields. Not so much shields anymore with the changes, but um, you'll still want to have that equally as uh, at hand as the rest of them. And then you'll want a reset button. You'll be throwing 100% into each of them every time you change it. There really isn't any point to put 33 to each whenever you need weapons, 100% into weapons. Uh, and this is a keybind where it's just hold for a second and then it goes. That's what I use. I have it on my right hat on my right stick. So up is to weapons, uh, right is to shields, and then down is to engines. But again, it, this is very specific to me and everybody's going to have to figure out their own situation because I know not everybody has uh, Constellation Alphas, so it gets is, a little bit difficult. Is there any reason you have yours set as the hold instead of just immediately toggle to max single button press? Yeah, because a tap will put it up in incremental parts. No, no, no. no. There's, there's an option that is literally tap once set to max. Yeah, I know. I was, just, from, I was wondering from, if there was... For me, I have it up once. We'll put individual a single sections okay. in. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I know I just said there's no point to do that it's not for smaller ships that's for larger ships where you might okay. bring a little bit of power into shields I wanted it to be consistent throughout everything and really it I wanted it more um, deliberate press for when I put it into different things so if I fuck up and I accidentally bump the wrong way I didn't lose all of my weapon charge you know it doesn't put me at a disadvantage where if I bumped it by accident and put all my power into shields by mistake, uh, then my guns won't recharge at all. Right now, I'll still get guns, they just won't be as effective. So it's for keeping it useful for larger ships and not fucking myself if I accidentally bump something wrong. Um, other things that I use all the time. Uh, missile operator mode, again, should be close at hand. You'll want a bind that you can adjust the number of missiles 
I have mine on a little scroll wheel. And then the missile type. Uh, other things that you'll want close. Chaff and flare. I do not have the panic bound. But depending on how missiles work, you may want the panic flare and chaff bound. Because this will dump 25% of your stores every time you press it. And it's almost guaranteed to get a missile off of you. Um, missile gameplay is really up in the air pretty much every patch with about how effective they are. So I just figure out what works. It's been three flares for a long time. Um, so I just hold it until I get my three flares out and then I dump them all at the same time. Can Sorry, I interject a quick echo? Yeah. Um, there is something I use a lot during fights and that is who's targeting me. That oh, is a right, very critical button system. for me. That's yeah. a thing? Yeah, you can see who's targeting you. And you can also tar bind a button to untarget people completely, which is really great. And I've also yeah. noticed that for pinning targets, you can pin targets and they won't be able to see who's targeting them. So it's a great way of keeping an eye on someone without actually having them know that you're the one who's keeping a track on them. Pinning targets is a great thing that I have not yet bound. Uh, and for individual fighters, it doesn't matter. But if you plan on flying things that have a turret, use the pin target key. Strongly so disagree pin... on that one for fighters. I am heavily used on pin targets. So there is one button. There's two buttons you need for pinning targets. One is pin target, whatever you're looking at. Uh, I can show you guys on the stream what it is. And then there's cycle through pin targets. So I do it to map out things. I find it massively useful in a fighter, regardless if I'm, I'm like, I, I don't even really use the center or a ta target hostile. I pin everything and then I cycle through my pins. So I, it, it's a preference though, but I do disagree that's not good for fighters. Yeah. Another, another note as far as pinning goes, um, which Johnny, Johnny uses it for his own mapping, which is perfectly fine. I mean, obviously all these settings are always going to be to your specification how you want to use things uh, again Johnny uses it to map you know number one is the most threatening or you know so and so is number two and so and so is number and everyone on board that are in turrets things like that they can see what you've pinned so if you're working on a constellation and you've got a gunner in the top and the bottom and you pin something your gunners can see that and it helps you guys really organize and prioritize who you need to take out first. So everyone's focusing on the same person rather than everyone's trying to scan and look for, you know, Joe Schmo in a Gladius that's attacking you and you got five fighters around you. You can just simply say it's pin, you know, pin target one or whatever. And all people have to do is just spin around until they see a number one on something. So what I want yeah. to talk about for mapping, if you look, you see that while I know where everyone's distance is because we're party members. Without that, when you pin targets, you see how far away they are from you, right? I can see that Durgan, I pinned him. Well, I have to I'll look at him and pin him now. I have the Toby, so it's easier. So now I see that he's 2,000 meters. This is what I meant by mapping. So I can see that Itachi is 309, etc. You don't get that info unless you target someone, right? So you can see how Ed, I have him targeted. And then I have a cycle pin target button, which just lets me cycle through shit, right? Everything I pin now, I can just boom, boom, boom. So that, that, that's why I really like paying target, but if you don't have a Toby, it's not as good, right? Because I can just look around and do that. Boom, boom, eight hidden targets. And this is what I mean by mapping, so I can see where things are. But when you don't, when you're not in a party with people, you won't see those distances until you target them. So I really like it, that's why thing, I like it. One thing about pinning targets is this, the moment you lose radar contact with them, the pin will go away and it will not come back. You have to re Correct. redo the pin. So keep that in mind if you're wondering why your pins are disappearing. 